Let's work a quick example problem where we apply the Bohr model of the atom and the Rydberg equation. So the problem here asks us what is the energy and the wavelength of a line in the spectrum of the hydrogen atom that represents the movement of an electron from the orbit or energy level with n equals 4 to the level with n equals 6 and in what part of the electromagnetic spectrum do we find this radiation. So First, as we often do in these problems, I like the idea of drawing a picture. We want to get a sense of what the energy levels look like. And if we think about the structure of the Rydberg equation and the energy levels of the hydrogen atom, we'll recall that they essentially look like this, where there's one lowest energy level and the energy levels increase in energy as we move up, but the gaps between them get smaller as we get to higher and higher values of n. In this particular problem, we're interested in the transition from n equals 4 to n equals 6. This is from a lower energy level at n equals 4 to a higher energy level at n equals 6. So a photon is being absorbed. So the change in energy is positive is another way to think about this. So to get started, we also need to recall that the energy levels of the hydrogen atom are governed by the Rydberg equation. And they're related to this difference between 1 over n squared between the initial and final levels multiplied by the Rydberg constant r infinity or r prime infinity if we're thinking in terms of a change in energy. In this particular problem, n1 is 4 and n2 is 6. This is going to guarantee that our delta E is positive since we can write that out to 1 16th minus 1 over 36, that's going to be a positive number, 1 16th is greater than 1 36th, last I checked. And then the last thing we need to calculate this energy difference is the value of the Rydberg constant, which in joules is 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Plug in these numbers, multiply it all out, and we get a number that is a very small number of joules, 7.57 times 10 to the negative 20 joules. We can use a conversion factor to convert this to more human-friendly energy units, I would say, of electron volts, and this turns out to be about 0.48 electron volts. To calculate the wavelength, we need to recall that wavelength is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the energy, which in this case is a change in energy from the lower to the higher energy level. When we plug in values for Planck's constant and the speed of light and the energy in joules is probably the most convenient unit to use, we arrive at a wavelength of 2.63 times 10 to the negative sixth meters. And to make the units a little more human friendly, we can realize that this is the same as 2,630 nanometers. And this in the thousands of nanometers is in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. And we could infer that just by looking at the dependence of the regions of the electromagnetic spectrum on wavelength, for example.